Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we just have a short lecture on multidimensional arrays. So, so far we've learned uh, what an array is. Uh, an array is just a group of memory locations related by the fact that they all have the same name and the same type. So, looking at this array that I've created right there called my array, an integer uh, of size 10. So, if we were to look in main memory and see what that looks like, we would have 10 elements in main memory. We would have on our heap, we would have a variable named my array. And it points at some location of memory, which is the location that has the value of the first element, sub zero. And then in subsequent locations of memory, we have each of the next variables in this array. All the way down to uh, index 9 in the array. So we have my array sub 0 up to my array sub 9 because my array was created with 10 elements inside of it. They are in sequential locations of memory. If we assume that this is a 32-bit operating system, an integer would consist of 4 bytes. So if this first element was at index 8000, the second one would be at index 8004, the next one at 8008, 8012, 8016, and so on. And these would be the locations in memory. In a future lecture, when we talk about pointers, we'll talk about addresses also, and you'll actually be able to get the value of those uh, addresses in memory if you would like. And you can verify then that they are only four bytes apart. If you're using a 64-bit operating system where the size of an array is 8 bytes instead of 4 bytes, then these values would be 8 away from each other instead of just being 4 away from each other. Okay, so that is a single-dimensional array or one-dimensional array. Now, today we're going to talk about multi-dimensional arrays. We can create an array of arrays. And that would be like a two-dimensional array. So you see down at the bottom, I have int my 2D array, and I have two indices there instead of just one. Now when I have two of them, that means that I the number of elements that I have is not just 10, which is the first number, but it's actually 10 times 20. So in that first array, I actually have 20 elements. So consider that one like this. So. Um, let me change this here from my array to my new one, which is my 2D array. And then inside of each element of the array, I don't just have an integer, but instead I have another array. And that array has 20 elements inside of it. And then at index 1, I have another array where I have 20 elements inside of it, and so on. So if I were to zoom in now on just one of these, so let's just zoom in on one of these, what I actually would see inside is another array indexed from 0, 1, 2, and so on, all the way up in this case to 19. So. When I access my array, I would access it by saying my 2D array. I give it an index. That's going to represent this first index here. And then I give it a second index. And that will represent the specific location from my array. So what I have here with a two-dimensional array, a lot of people like to refer to them as a matrix or a table. In fact, the way that they're implemented inside of programming languages is it is an array of arrays. <clears throat> so uh, I have my outer array, which is designated by this value of 10. So I have 10 elements in my outer array. My inner array, I have 20 elements inside of that. So my array, my 2D array, sub 9, sub 2, refers to this element right here. Now, the reason that a lot of people refer to this as a table kind of makes sense because another way that we could draw this instead of as I've drawn it there would be as a table where the first element 
or the first uh, index could refer to the row, and the second index could refer to the column. Now, this works okay if you're only dealing with two dimensions. The problem is that we, is that we have multi-dimensional arrays. They're not limited to just two dimensions. You could have a three-dimensional array, a four-dimensional array. Once you get past three dimensions, we have a hard time understanding what exactly that looks like. Plus, it's really hard for us to draw a three-dimensional array here on the uh, whiteboard. We probably could, extending this out some, making it kind of look three-dimensional. I was never real good at art, but something like that. And you could actually make it look three-dimensional. But each one of those individual elements is going to have uh, a value associated with it. It's going to have an integer associated with it. So it's a lot easier to think that what we have is an array of arrays as opposed to um, a table. Because then when you expand this to uh, multi-dimensions, like three, four, five, as many as you want, you will um, understand that it's an array of arrays of arrays. Uh, inside of it as opposed to trying to figure out what this uh, four-dimensional table actually looks like. Uh, okay, so that is uh, two-dimensional arrays. Um, so let's uh, look at this for a second, see if we can figure out exactly what is going on here. So let's say that we have the declaration char names of 20 and then of 10. So the size is 20 for the first element and 10 for the second element. What is the type of the following variables? The first one, names, sub zero, sub one. What is the type of that variable? Hopefully you all figured out that that is going to be an individual character. That is just a char. Uh, names, sub zero. Now remember that we have an array of arrays. So names, sub zero is actually going to consist of an array of characters with how many elements in that array? 10 elements in that array. So name sub zero is an array with 10 elements. Uh, actually, name sub zero is a one dimensional array that has 10 elements. Now, when we go down to the next line, names, names is a two dimensional array where the first, first index goes up to 19, zero to 19, 20 elements. And the second index has 10 elements. It goes from zero through nine. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> when we are reading a character in, we can read a character into name sub zero sub one. We cannot read a character into name sub zero. We cannot read a character into names. Those are both arrays. One is a one dimensional array and the other is a two dimensional array. So we cannot read an individual character into it. To read a character in, we have to read it into a character slot, which would be name sub zero sub one. That would be one element. Uh, in fact, we have 200 characters that are represented by this names array, name sub zero sub zero, all the way up to name sub 19 sub nine. That would give us our 200th element that we have in this array. Okay, here is a little sample. Uh, so I have this grades array, a uh, two-dimensional array where the first element has 10. Uh, sorry, the first index has 10 elements and the second one has 20. I uh, created two variables here, i and j. And then I just have uh, nested for loops. So I have a 4i goes from 0 to 10 and then a 4j goes from 0 to 20. That's line six and seven. Inside on line eight, I say enter the grade number of an integer for student number of an integer. I did J and I. So J, the index J, which is gonna be that inner dimension, goes from zero up to 19, and it represents the grade number uh, for a specific student. The student number that I'm referring to is going to be uh, my variable I. And so I have 10 students from zero through nine with up to 20 grades for each one of them. Uh, line nine is how I would read in an integer into uh, an individual element of my two-dimensional array. So I do a scan F percent D and then ampersand grade sub I sub J. If I'm reading in an integer, since it's a two-dimensional array, you have to make sure that you have both of the dimensions uh, when you are reading it in. If you only had one of the dimensions, you would be reading in some value into an array. We don't know how to do that yet. So uh, to do that, we would have to uh, to read an integer in, we have to read it into an individual element that we have inside of our grades array, and that would be the uh, grade sub i sub j. So that's an individual element in our two-dimensional array. Okay, uh, the program that we write uh, today will deal with arrays a little bit more, uh, but that's it for uh, multi-dimensional arrays. Make sure that you get some practice with that. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.